Welcome back everybody. This is module one, what to do while you still have a job, session two, business foundation. Now if you haven't listened to session one yet, I highly suggest you go through and peruse through that as we go through some of the legal aspects or legal items you'll need for your business. In this session, we're going to go through a lot of the banking and funding items that you're going to need to consider to get your business up and running. Now, what we're going to review in this particular session is we're going to go through your bank accounts, and we're going to go through capital funding. Now bank accounts will focus mainly on getting the bank account set up under your business name. Now recall in session one we talked and walked through the EIN process to get the EIN set up. So now we're going to talk about getting your respective bank account set up. On the capital funding what we'll end up doing is we're going to go through the initial funding template. So there will be an Excel schedule and for those of you who don't Excel there will be a Google worksheet that kind of sets up a process on what you need to consider from a monetary standpoint. So, bank accounts, operating account. Now, this is going to be your main account that you're going to want to set up for your business. And again, the important thing with setting up your business, in particular your bank accounts, is you want to have it segregated from your regular standard personal accounts. So that's why you want to set it up as a separate account. Even though when you first start out your business, you may have very little funds going through there, you know, because you're just starting up, you're, you're building up your customer base, you're building up your products, what have you, you still want to get that set up because it'll make your life so much easier down the road. You know, if you put it in your personal bank account, it's going to get commingled and trying to break it out is going to be a headache. So, your operating account, you're going to want to go down to a financial institution that you trust. You know, there's some out there that, you know, people don't care much for. You know, make sure it's one that you trust and, and if you don't have a relationship with one, highly suggest you start building a relationship with some of the people there so it makes life easier down the road. But go down there, get your account set up. You're probably going to need to take your EIN form with you along with possibly your articles of incorporation and sometimes your operating agreement depending on the bank. But keep in mind you want to have we've already gone through that and set that up in session one so that should be pretty easy but again you're going to get this set up. A savings account or sometimes as we'll go through in a later session in a later module um, we'll call it cash reserve account they're one and the same. It's an account that you know, you want to make sure you have enough money in your operating account to fund your business, but if you have funds above and beyond that, you want to make sure it's earning some interest. Now, granted, the interest will be very minute, but you want to make sure you have that. So go ahead and get that savings account set up as well. And taxes. So you're going to want to have a separate account for taxes federal taxes, state sales tax, payroll, what have you. you. The reason why you want to set up a separate bank account for this aspect is ultimately these funds are not going to be your funds. So if you're, let's do federal taxes, um, predominantly you'll do about 40% uh, and some of that 40% is actually going to be state tax as well. But at the end of the day when you get done with the fiscal year and you're filing your tax and return and hopefully you have a net income you're going to owe money to the government and it's better to have it set up a separate account set up and you're putting amounts in there over time and we'll go over that in a, a later session as to what amounts you need to calculate but as you go through that process and you set up the amounts you'll transfer out of your operating account into this tax account this it's really a bank account and the reason why you do that is so that you just don't psychologically spend that money. It's not going to be yours. It's not really for you. So it's better to have a separate account set up so that you set it aside. It's not commingled with any of your other funds anymore and it's ready to go for when you need to submit it to whether it's the federal government, state government, local, what have you. And another item to consider is an item called a zero balance account. Now a zero balance account, sometimes called an impress account or called a dollar balance account, is where you set up a bank account predominantly for payroll and the way it functions is let's say you have a payroll and let's say your payroll for the two weeks ended is fifty thousand dollars and that fifty thousand dollars is all your employees all their checks what have you the way you set up a zero balance account is you say okay my payroll is fifty thousand I need to fund fifty thousand 
So you take it out of your operating account and you put it into the zero balance account and it's a manual transfer into that zero balance account. So when you reconcile that zero balance account, you transferred in $50,000, you theoretically should have all the payroll checks if you send them all up will equal that 50,000. So if you have here's my deposit in less all my outstanding checks, theoretically the total should balance out to zero. And so that's the premise of that. It's an important control, especially if you're going to do manual paychecks at first. Reason being is a paycheck could be a physical paycheck could be altered. You know, if you're paying somebody $1,000 and they happen to put an extra zero in there for 10,000 and the bank cashes it, if you have that going through your operating account, you might not catch that right away and they might get away from it. Now, if you're using a zero balance account, what's going to happen is if you only transfer 50,000, that was the exact amount to cover the payroll and somebody manipulates a check, what's going to happen is eventually payroll checks are going to start to bounce. And once that happens, you'll be notified and then you'll be able to investigate that um, you know, who altered their check and you'll be able to catch them. Um, that's the beauty of having that zero balance account is um, that's the only place where that money is. Now the important control on this, and keep in mind this is a huge internal control, is when you do a transfer out of your operating account to fund your zero balance account, you want to do it manually. You do not want to have your zero balance account automatically linked to your operating account because the second you do that, you just completely defeated the whole purpose of having that ZBA account. So um, again, mainly used for payroll. You can do a manual transfer out of your operating account into that account, and then if somebody were to alter checks or alter anything, um, it's going to cause checks to eventually bounce because you only funded enough to cover all those individual checks. So if somebody alters it, checks are going to start to bounce, and then you're going to be able to catch, you know, catch those individuals who uh, ultimately um, did that. Capital funding. So now we're starting up our business and we honestly need to figure out how much do we need to get to fund this and where are we going to get this from. So sources for funding. Personal funds. Obviously this is kind of the first one that most people look at is you know, how much money do I have saved up? You know, How much do I have in a, a CD? How much do I have in my checking account, you know, what, how do I, how am I going to, me personally, fund this? Investor funds. Now, there could be a chance that, hey, you have a great business idea, you just need the capital funding, and you decide to go out and fund it through investors. You know, they're going to contribute a certain amount of money, they're not going to technically own it, they'll have maybe a note receivable from you that you'll pay on, um, but that's another aspect of getting those funds retirement funds. And what I mean by this is pulling off of your retirement. So if you at your current business have a 401k, you know, you might decide, hey, you know what, I'm going to bite the bullet, pay the excise tax and take a distribution out of my 401k so that then I can start funding my business. Now, keep in mind, if you have a 401k and you're going to pull money out of it, there you first will get hit with an excise tax. Right now it's currently 10%. So if you pull $100,000, let's say, out of your, your 401k plan, and you're going to get hit with excise tax, $10,000, bang, right off the top. So you're only going to get $90,000. Well, then after that, you're going to get taxed on that $90,000 at a standard federal rate. Now, think about that. $90,000, if that's going to hit your tax return, that's going to be above and beyond whatever else you have going through your tax return. So that may kick you into a higher tax bracket. So then you're going to pay even higher amount of tax on that. So you need to keep that in mind if you do pull from your retirement funds, whether it's 401k or IRA, what are the tax implications here? So I just throw that there, out there as a caution. It is, a, it is something you can consider, but you want to make sure you fully understand the tax implications that could affect you. And then loans. <clears throat> and, and specifically, I put in here business incubators. Uh, now, they go by different names in different communities, but for the most part, a lot of times business incubators utilize funds from the state that you live in that they loan out. So what happens is a lot of times of a business incubator, 
you'll go to them if you're quote not bankable so if you go to Wells Fargo or US Bank or Bank of America and they're all turning you down saying no we're not going to loan you money because it's a startup business and you know you don't have any activity but you're sitting there thinking I need this money but I can't start the business until I have the money type situation what happens with incubators is a lot of times they may have funds set aside through grants that they'll loan to you if you're not bankable with other organizations with other financial institutions and so that is an, uh, an avenue that you can pursue um, however keep in mind these are still it's still a loan even though you're not going through a bank you're still going to be expected to make um, payments you know depending on how they set up the terms and you're going to be paying interest on there so uh, I just want to throw that out there for those of you who are not familiar with um, business incubator type organizations in your community highly look it up and see if they offer the the um, what's usually called a loan fund and it's grants that come from the state into the incubators that then loan those out the again the premise of those is they want to start small businesses they want small businesses out there and they're kind of there to help out now now we get into budget and in particular the initial funding so when you're going to start your business, you really want to have a full understanding as to how much money do I need to literally just get this thing off the ground. I'm not, you know, and I'm not talking, you know, your cash flows from, you know, operations of selling and purchasing supplies and what have you. This is literally to get the thing off the ground. And so, in with your materials is this template, and this template goes through and sets um, up just kind of a quick analysis as to what kind of cash funding do you have and what kind of expenditures are you going to have and do you have enough in other words this is going to say here's all your expenditures do you really have enough to even get this off the ground or do you need to start pursuing other funds before you get to that point so so let's go ahead and jump into this respective template and find out how we can go about this process so here's our template that's supplied in your packet of information and again this is currently an Excel schedule that I'm using but again there's also going to be a Google Doc uh, available if you don't have Microsoft Excel and the way this is set up is it's set up with particular macros to help you one input all your expenses but two highlight what you're deficient or are you deficient on your your resources so really quick and easy let's just say you know just to fill this out real quick let's say personal funds we're going to fund our business of ten thousand dollars from personal funds and so drops in there right now this macro saying yep you have enough to fund that and then let's just say just so you can see how this flows through let's say um uh, business license well no let's do let's do uh, equipment. Let's say you have really expensive equipment, it is eleven thousand. Again, this is just so you can see this flow through. Type eleven thousand. All of a sudden, it kicks out and says no. As we can see, funding ten thousand, but our expenses are eleven thousand. So again, the way this form this form is set up is to once you get everything in there, it's going to tell you do you have enough funding these items available for your expenses. The other aspect on this is if you come down here is it will also indicate what your shortage is. So in this case, you know, we put the eleven thousand in, obviously it's a thousand dollars more than that. This will indicate what your cash shortage is. Um, the way this macro is going, so let's change this to nine thousand. So now we have ten thousand, yes, that's more than nine thousand over expenses, and so yes is funding, but then it comes down here and indicates what your cash overage is. So again, it, there's formulas in both sides to indicate, okay, what is your overage and do you have enough for funding? So let's just say um, brochures, just to put a number in here to get this to trigger, bang, it kicks over and now it says you have a cash shortage. So that is one of the aspects on this template is it's really designed to help you walk through this process to indicate, okay, how much do I have and where do I have it come from? So really quickly we'll just start inputting some numbers here legal documents legal zoom a lot of times that's about 250 um, registration let's just assume 10 bucks for every one of those insurance probably about 50 dollars key man again go back to session one where we talked about key man insurance let's just say 15 dollars 15 uh, health insurance that's probably going to be about a grand 
uh, supplemental insurance. Again, we didn't go over supplemental insurance, but that is the AFLAC type uh, insurance that you want to consider having. You know, if you're injured, um, your health will only cover the health part of it. Uh, however, if you're going to be down, disabled, not be able to work, really consider using getting some supplemental insurance just to save, especially if it's just you, you're a one-man shop, um, consider doing that. Um, computer expense, you know, this is expense, not um, equipment, or this this actually is the equipment to purchase. So um, let's say you get a $50 computer, uh, you buy a backup computer. Again, we're going to go over some of these items in the next session. Monitors, let's say, to 50. Well, let's actually say 500. You're going to get two monitors, desk, you're going to have a 350. So you start kind of going through this process. As you see, you know, these expenses just start to add up. Um, rent, you know, are you going to have rent? Uh, again, this rent is just for the first month. Uh, it could you could put the full year's rent in there if you wanted to to really get an idea of where do I need to be. So as you go through, you'll see there's a lot of information here to input and to consider. Now there could be even more items in here. I tried to just highlight the expenses that are usually predominant that you see, so that you can consider, hey, do I have enough? Uh, in this situation, let's say you only have three thousand dollars you can put into your company. Well, right now, just up those without looking at any kind of software or marketing or website, you're still going to be short on that. So that's what this template's set up to do, is to give you an understanding of here are the expenses you really need to consider. This is just to get it started up. And how are you going to fund this? So that you have an idea is that, you know, you don't, uh, a lot of times what happens is you have a small business person comes in and starts up their company, but they start forgetting that, oh yeah, I need a printer. Oh yeah, I need a file cabinet to host all this. Oh wait, I need to get uh, internet. You know, I need to get software for this company. Um, especially specific sof software specific to your company. Um, and I'm not talking, you know, Excel and Word and PDF and all that stuff. I'm talking about if you do a business that has software specifically to your business itself, you know, such as like a CPA firm will have tax software that was specific to CPA firms. That's what you need to look at because a lot of times that software alone is usually the pricey item. Um, so depending on what you do, you need to consider that. Um, also website. Now, I don't care if you're going to be a lawn service company, you need to have a website. And we'll go over that more in, in session three, but that's something you need to consider is you need to make sure you have a website. Even if it's just a just a basic three-page type website, you need to have something out there because everybody looks for information or looks for um, services or products via the websites. So again, this is the template. Go ahead and play with it and start going through it. And like I said, I would go through each one of these items and say, hey, do I need a vehicle? No, I don't. Do I need this? Yes, I do. Uh, and look and see if there, there may be something in here that is not getting picked up. But just so that you have it down, you fully understand what that process is. So, so now let's go ahead and return to the, the presentation and take a look at budget for the first year. So now that we've gone through the initial funding template, now we need to consider budget for the first year. Now important things on this is for your first year operations, keep in mind you may not have net income for your first year. I mean, very few startup businesses have net income there, but you need to make sure you understand if I don't, when am I going to you know, break even? When am I going to get ahead? You need to map this out. So one thing you need to understand is how much cash inflows for the first year and be realistic. You know, don't sit there and say, okay, I'm going to start this business and I'm going to make a million dollars in three months in. Well, you, know, you need to be realistic as to what's the product you're selling, how do I sell it, what's the market, um, what what new items do I need to consider? And then you need to consider cash outflow for the first year. So if you're selling a product, you know, what are, where are the suppliers? How much do you have to pay for, you know, if you're building something out of steel, how much, what are steel prices? Um, if you're getting something that's shipped in from another country, what's, you know, what's the, uh, the tax to bring it in? What's the shipping cost to bring it in? So make sure you fully map out 
what are the cash inflows, what are the cash outflows. Now this is kind of like a quasi business plan, but this is just focusing on that very first year as to how's the revenue going to come in, what's it going to look like, how's the revenue going to go out. Because the important thing to keep in mind when you start a business, and pretty much anything in life, your bills never stop. Even though your income may stop at one point in time or get held up, you still have bills. So you need to keep in mind you understand uh, how that process goes. Another thing that I don't have on this slide, but that you want to consider is seasonality. You know, are you going to be in a business, you know, if you're in the state of Colorado and you're going to service skiers, well, you, you're going to have a seasonality of pretty much, you know, November through April, you know, that's going to be the great time, you know, after that, how are you going to fund your operations, you know, outside of that season? So keep that in mind as you're building this template is, what are your flows and do I have seasonality um, built into my particular business? The next thing you want to consider is calculating your break-even point. Now, in a later session we'll go through the break-even and how to go through that process, but I just wanted to kind of throw that out for right now is you need to understand where do you have to be to just break even. I'm not talking net income or anything, I'm literally saying you're going to cover all your costs, and I'm not and I'm not indicating salaries either. I'm just saying just the business itself. Where do you need to be to break even? You also at one point need to you probably want to break bring in a salary for yourself. Okay, this is break even without a salary. This is break even with a salary for yourself to be able to you know be able to live. And so those are important things that you want to consider in your first year is building your first year budget. Now. Next session, session three, we're going to go over a lot of the administrative stuff, a lot of the equipment you need to consider buying, software you need to buy, website, marketing, so on and so forth. So um, I look forward to talking to you again in session three, uh, and that concludes session two. Thank you.